getting into wholesale is easier than you think. It's probably easier than you even tried before, but you gotta be honest with yourself. How much of an effort have you actually given it? Hey, hey, welcome this, to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I would love to talk about wholesale today. How about you? Are you into wholesale? Have you done wholesale yet? Are you sick of it? Are you new to it? Are you loving it? Well, we're going to discuss all of these different things because I think everyone's all over the map when it comes to wholesale. We all have some fears. We all have some things that we haven't figured out yet. Some of us have it completely nailed. And just when we think we've got it figured out, something new happens. So today we're really going to talk all about wholesale and specifically how to find wholesale products, how to find them legitimately, how to find them in other places. And you know, normally I would love to be able to show you all these things on YouTube and you can kind of follow along. There is a video that goes along with this. If you haven't seen it yet, mommyincome.com slash 100. It is a video for me showing you how to find vendors. So you want, definitely want to check that out, mommyincome.com slash 100 to kind of check out that video as to how to find some wholesalers. But we are going to talk about different things in here because to be real, to be honest and to be fair, I get emails and messages and DMs and all these things all the time about people talking about wholesale, having questions, saying they can't find profitable products and that they've tried this and that. But to be honest, people haven't been trying the things that they need to be trying on a regular basis. What I hear a lot of is excuses. I can't do this. I can't do that. I haven't found this. I haven't found that. And although that's very frustrating to many of you because you felt like you have done some, the reality is most people start really too slow. They, they, they quit before they actually get the result they want. They try two or three different things. They said, oh, well, I've tried this. I've tried that. I tried that. Well, trying trying how many times? Trying how many ways? Because it's not just about, oh, okay, I followed your directions. I went to the 100 video. I watched it. I went to a, a trade show website. I found one vendor and they said no. So I'm all done. <laughs> Good luck with that. If that's how you're going to run your business and that's how you think it's, it's a strategy of growth, then maybe entrepreneurship isn't right for you. <laughs> because this is about not just trying once, trying twice, trying three times. But guess what? You're going to have to grow a little bit of thick skin. You're going to have to keep doing some things over and over again in different ways because you don't always get to knock it out of the park the first time. You know, when you think about sports, I love sports. Do you guys know this about me? I love sports. I do love to, I love football. I, this is playoff time. So I am like so jazzed about all the different playoff games and the Super Bowl coming up. And you know, you know who's going to be in the Super Bowl, right? Right? Do I even have to say it? If y'all don't know me best by now, like Google that, you know, what team that I'm supporting. Anyway, <laughs> All that to say that I love sports and I love what people do. But when you, when we, what we see when we watch a game on the weekends and we see the game, we see the the game time, right? We see them at performing, hopefully, at their best and their brightest, and they're they're ready to go. They're, it's game day. But what we don't see is the Monday through Friday practice that they put in. We don't see the plane rides to the out-of-town games and all the gear that they have to bring. We think that these people are super-duper celebrities, which they are, a lot of them, pro players and things like that. But what we see on the outside, what we see on social media, what we see at game time is a result of what these players do consistently when we're not looking. We don't see the 7 a.m. workout that they do before they go to practice to then do thousands of reps of the same pass, the same play, the same drills, the same thing over and over again to get better at it. That's what we're not seeing. We see the result. We see a win or a loss or we see um, the different plays come into action when we're watching football. But we've not what we're not looking at and not seeing is all of the work that these people have put in over and over again, week after week after week to get that result. So when you're coming to me 
friends, remember that I love you and I really do care about your success. And so I'm not saying this as mean. I'm not making fun of you. I'm not dismissing your emails and your your true emotions about how you feel about these things. What I'm challenging you to do is to stop giving up so easily. Do you want this to work or not? Because if you do, you're going to have to put in some effort, some consistent quality effort. Like no half-ass work here. I just won't accept that. You know, when some people, there's, there's one particular person that came to me and they asked for a refund for the wholesale bundle system. And First of all, I'm not offended by that. I understand that it's not for everyone. And and we actually don't offer refunds for the wholesale bundle system because um, it's proprietary information. And once you view and see the information that, that we have created and curated for you, um, you are you obtained that knowledge. That's like asking for a refund when you go and take a college class and say, well, that just didn't really do it for me. Or I just didn't really learn a whole lot or whatever else. It's the college says, I'm sorry, the tuition is due up front and whatever you do with the knowledge that you learned or didn't learn is up to you, but they they don't give you refunds because you just didn't like it or you didn't follow it or if it wasn't for you. So that is kind of our policy and we've been, you know, razzed for that for many years saying you should offer a guarantee and you should offer this and that. Here's the reality. Most of the time people see the work They see how intimidating they feel like it could be. And they even watch all of the videos and the courses. They don't take any action and they just say, this is not for me. I don't want it. Or or, this isn't working for me. Some people would say, you know, this this isn't working for me. I've tried this and tried that. Well, I've always offered a money back guarantee for somebody who can actually bring a bundle to the marketplace, follow all the directions, all the instructions, do everything that they're supposed to do. And then they say, literally, bundling is not for me. I was not successful. I didn't like it or it was awful. At that point, there might be a refund negotiation going on because they actually did the work. They put the work in. They did research. They put their bundle out there. They did all the things they were supposed to do. And then they think that it's not working. Then I feel like there's room to talk. But a lot of people just get overwhelmed with all of the information and they're, they're not sure and they don't know how to process it. Or to be honest, they're scared. And so they want to bow out early. I just want everyone, if they're in this, to give it a fair shake. Get things a fair shake before you start giving up on them. Because over and over, I hear a lot of the same times and sometimes the same people saying, I just can't find anything. And I say, well, how hard did you look? And I've got this checklist of questions that I ask people. Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this, this, and this? And if they say yes to all of those questions and they've done them multiple times, then I am more inclined to help them resolve their issues because they did give it a full try. So all that to say these things, getting into wholesale is easier than you think. It's probably easier than you even tried before, but you got to be honest with yourself. How much of an effort have you actually given it? You tried a little here, a little there. Maybe you went to one or two websites. They said no, they denied you or they did this or that. And you're just like completely giving up. So just ask yourself that question and be honest with yourself. Nobody's checking your paper. Nobody's looking. It's only you and your own integrity. Have you given it your all and you're still coming up short? Because if so, let's chat. Because I'll be asking you all the different things. I expect that to happen, to see all the different things. And then there's definitely help for you. But buying wholesale and finding suppliers and distributors and manufacturers is so much easier than you think. And if you're not doing wholesale yet, you're missing out on thousands and thousands of products and money and opportunity. But most people come with excuses. They say things like, I can't afford wholesale, or they won't work with me, or I have no idea what I'm doing, or I don't know the questions to ask. Well, guess what? All of those answers are out there, and they're available, actually, in the wholesale bundle system. I teach you how to do wholesale properly, including having the conversations you need to have with people when you don't know what to say. So there's definitely information out there. Um, it's about whether or not to you you're bringing it to the table. So here's another thing talking about, let's just debunk some of these myths that are out there, right? Because you want to find wholesale products to sell on Amazon. Do you not? 
And the first that what that starts with is either a just finding a bunch of wholesales and wholesalers and distributors and vendors and manufacturers and all the things, which is the easiest part. See, I find that a lot of people out there are teaching wholesale and I feel like some of it is backwards. And that's just my opinion. Light up the flagpole. There's a lot of people that have opinions out there. That's great. But a lot of times people are using software, or using something that seems like they can find some profitable niches on Amazon. And they're like, okay, this is a good popular product, popular niche. And then they go backwards trying to find someone to either manufacture it or distributors or wholesalers. And then they find that the market is saturated or they're not open to new Amazon sellers. And you're just starting all this research all over again to where I like to approach it a little bit differently. I like to have all of the products that I have access to already. In other words, wholesale vendors that gladly open accounts for me that say, yes, you can sell on Amazon. Yes, you can sell in bundles. Yes, you can do whatever you want with our products. We don't care. Here's our catalog. Here's how you place orders. Have fun. And now the research is all up to me. I have a full entire catalog that I can start researching and start putting bundles together from that catalog, knowing they're going to say yes, knowing all the ins and outs of it. That is already creating success for yourself instead of looking for all the products that you think might be profitable in the, in the beginning and then trying to hunt down proper sellers for a proper wholesalers for those items. You could actually start with stuff you already have access to that you could start ordering right now and build bundles and wholesale products out of what's already available. That seems a little bit easier to me than trying to find the needle in the haystack. So I like, you know, like the needle in a haystack. One of my favorite things about hearing, hearing that thing is that the easiest way to find a needle in a haystack is to bring a big fat magnet. <laughs> And I like to say that when we come to the table with the wholesale accounts already established with catalogs, either digital or printed at our fingertips, we can start product research immediately. We don't need someone to tell us all the different things of, of let's try to find all these different niche products first and try to narrow it down by all this different data points and everything else first. Let's maybe just start where it's easier. Access. That's the biggest problem. Um, there's a lot of people out there with wholesale when they're trying to find profitable products and they're looking at, you know, really big name brand stuff like, oh, well, retail arbitrage, I was selling, you know, this KitchenAid um, things that I bought at the grocery store or bought at a, you know, home goods type store and I sold some attachments for KitchenAid and they did really well and I made a lot of money so I want to buy them wholesale and sell them on Amazon. That's a terrible approach, number one, because a lot of those big brands either have restrictions on their brands for Amazon. They, they no longer sell to Amazon sellers. They already have their fair amount of distributors. And the likelihood of you getting a wholesale account for one of these big brands is slim to none. And I think a lot of people just get discouraged by that because they start there and they think, oh, I'm doing really good on these Nike things. Maybe I'll go buy. You get my point, right? It's just not the best place to start. Best place to start is with access. What can you buy right now without any hindrances? What's in stock? What is selling? What is available to you right now? Instead of looking at all the things you hope and want to sell and are going to be your big, you know, pay dirt for, for your account. The reality is it just doesn't happen that way. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to do some research, a lot of research. That's what most product selling businesses are built on. Really good, solid research and good products. So let's do research. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be research experts. So some of the myths about wholesale and some of the things of, of finding wholesale products to sell is really all about the, the access. Number one, finding the vendors. And guess what? The number one myth and the number one thing that hinders so many people when it comes to trying to find wholesalers or, or reputable, legitimate, non-middlemen wholesale product vendors, again, all of these, this lingo, vendor, distributor, manufacturer, a lot of it is interchangeable. When I say wholesalers, I mean companies that are selling products 
business to business for wholesale prices. In other words, you don't walk into Target and it's retail price of $9.99. That's not what you're getting it for. You, they are getting it for cheaper. And you, as a legitimate business, that's what you can get as well. So wholesalers, vendors, distributors, those are, and suppliers, those are all interchangeable. Now, manufacturer can fit in there as well, but manufacturers are often, can be wholesalers, but can also only distribute to distributors, you know? So, or, or like if you go to Alibaba or AliExpress, or some other uh, manufacturing companies out there that are manufacturing products, they can also be both manufacturer and vendor slash supplier, distributor, whatever. The difference in stateside kind of United States or wherever else in, in global really is going to be the terminology in which is most commonly used in your language. So I'm just letting you guys know that's this universal kind of terms if you don't, if you aren't aware of that. So then manufacturing, like the, the minimum order quantities are going to be different when you when you find a wholesale pro, wholesale products to sell. But one of the number one things that people come to me is, well, I, I Googled it and I didn't come up with the, the vendor, the wholesaler. I Google wholesale on, on Google and, you know, you're in a rabbit trail forever. Find trade show websites are the best place to find legitimate wholesale distributors, period trade show websites. So when you're looking for that, you can go to like wholesalecentral.com has some or go to mommyincome.com slash 100 and watch the video. Literally just watch the video. It's probably five minutes, maybe less than 10 minutes. And it shows you exactly step by step how to go through, find wholesale vendors, find trade shows, look for products. So for example would be like, okay, um, the holidays have just kind of passed, but you did really well at the holidays. Maybe you sold some retail arbitrage stuff for Christmas and you're like, man, I'd love to get that stuff wholesale for next year because I know number one, you can make more money. Um, number two, you can get unlimited supply or you can order early and have enough. You know, if you sold out of something early and you were bummed, wholesale is why you want to do that because you can just do that. So the number one way to find wholesalers is get the products, retail packaging that you already have and find the distributor and or manufacturer on the back of the box and Google that. So if it says, okay, let me try to find a piece of something that's sitting around here. <laughs> I should have been a little bit more prepared. Oh, here we go. So my daughter got these affirmation cards in her Christmas stocking and they happen to be sitting here. And I give her one um, sometimes in her lunch and sometimes she reads them by herself, but they're kind of gift to her and I pass them out. So these affirmation cards are made by, on the, on the back side of the packaging right here, it says distributed by Callan. There you go. Just pick up a, a a thing of something that you want to research. It says distributed by Callan, and it says www.callan.lp.com. Made in China, manufactured in 2021. There's a barcode. There's all these things. So, in two seconds, you can then go to callan.com and you can find out if you can wholesale these products, you can buy them. You can look at their website and it says, hey, reach out to us, contact us, become a seller, become a distributor, become a retailer. Um, and you contact them and say, I'd like to open an account and I'd like to sell your affirmation cards on Amazon. Okay, great. Or I'd like to just sell your product. You don't even have to talk about Amazon. So that's one of the most simplest ways to find manufacturers and distributors. And you can do that for almost any product walking into almost any store. Um, yeah, that's the hard way kind of thing. Like, or you can go to Google and say, who manufactures XYZ, whatever product you're looking for. If you're looking for a specific product, if you have no idea what to sell and you're just trying to get some wholesalers and you're just trying to get some ideas and you don't know what you're doing, that's even better. You know why? Because there's way more options. So um, also going to trade show websites. Uh, wholesalecentral.com is a great place to go to find different trade shows. But here's another example of trade shows. I going to do lots of workshops this year. We go to trade shows and we walk around the trade shows and there's hundreds of thousands of vendors of products that want to do business with you. That's exactly why they're there. They paid the money, set up their booth, brought all of their stuff because they want to sell products to you. So go to the trade shows. Did you also know that nine out of 10 trade shows are absolutely free for buyers? that you don't need to, it doesn't cost you any money. So if you found a trade show that's literally five minutes from your house, go to it. 
make a couple hours to go and walk around. All you need is your to register. So go to their register and you can register for their website. So finding legitimate wholesalers is way easier than just Googling wholesale. Find the distributors on the packages. Also, look local search. Do a specific search. Who distributes XYZ product? Who distributes HDMI cords made by Sony? I don't know. So looking for a specific type of products, find distributors and vendors that way. Use the back of the packages. Also, industry newsletters. There is there are newsletters that online newsletters that you can sign up for. Um, that that like in retail insider or you know retail.com or something like that. You can kind of Google those different trade publications, and they'll probably ask you to register, or have some sort of verification or anything else. So, not being able to find wholesalers is really not. It's, it shouldn't be an excuse. You can find wholesalers anywhere. Also, if you're looking for a specific product you want manufactured and you're not necessarily worried about minimum order quality, quantity, you can go to Alibaba. Alibaba pretty much has manufacturers for every product out there um, that you can think of and it probably can be customized and all that. The difference between some smaller wholesalers and things like Alibaba is that generally speaking, your minimum order quantity for ordering something either custom or from overseas plus your shipping is going to be really costly. So unless you're at a place where you can spend like thousands of dollars, I'm talking two to six to plus, you know, millions even, um, then maybe that's not the best place to start. But that doesn't mean that there are certain companies that won't lower their minimum order quantities. It just means that it has a higher barrier to entry because it's generally more expensive than your regular uh, wholesale distributors that are local to you or close enough to you and can ship, um, you know, throughout the United States without having any issues. So that's just another thing that you want to think about. Wholesale is easier than you think. Do, don't just go to Google. Go to mommyincome.com slash 100. Watch that video. Follow the steps. That is literally the free information that you have there. You could walk away right now and have thousands of wholesale accounts open by the end of today if you just watch that video and do what it says. Um, but also the excuses I'm hearing about wholesale and why people won't get into it, or maybe they've been turned down. Look, I've been turned down a hundred times over from sellers because they won't sell to Amazon sellers. But over the past five years, I've been doing this a long time and I have seen nothing but growth when it comes to online retailers. They are opening their doors to more Amazon sellers. Not everyone, not all of them, especially not very big brands or people that have already been burned by Amazon. They have like this, you know, they have like a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to Amazon. <laughs> Don't we all sometimes? I mean, let's be real. But there are companies that are out there that are very hungry to get your business and they will do business with you. So if someone says no, it's a, okay, thanks. And you walk to the next vendor and you talk to them because I guarantee you, you will not get 2000 no's. You might get 200 though. You might get two. You might get no no's. Last one of the last times we went to Atlanta and the, in the there, I really tried to get someone to say, no, I couldn't sell their product on Amazon. And I couldn't get anyone to say no to us. They were like, yeah, sure, do whatever you want. And we're like, great, this is great. Now some categories, and especially some brands are way more Amazon friendly. Things like home decor products. Home decor products are generally speaking all about the keywords and all about the attributes and not much about brand at all. I mean, what is the brand of the sign that's hanging in your foyer that says, welcome friends? You might know where you purchased that, but you, there's not really a brand name on it. It just says, welcome friends. And it's the color and the style that you want. Maybe it's a farmhouse style. Maybe it's a modern style. Maybe it has black and white. Maybe it has blue and gray. Who knows? But you didn't search for that or look for that based on a brand name, right? You were looking for a product that was going to complement the design in your foyer. So keeping those things in mind as well. Some people have, some of the vendors have rules about MAP, MAP pricing, which is minimum advertised price. So certain companies out there, they say, yes, you can sell on Amazon, but if you're selling single unit items, then you can't go below XYZ price. And then you see someone on Amazon selling it for $9.99 when the MAP price is $14.99 and you think, wait, they're getting away with it. How can I? 
this is why we bundle friends. This is exactly why we bundle because map prices do not apply to bundles because they're not single unit items. Now that doesn't mean that you're getting around the rules. It just means that you are putting something in a bundle, which means you're not directly competing with that product, which means that the map pricing doesn't apply to that. So just keep that in mind. But there are some offer exclusives to certain Amazon sellers. Some sell on Amazon themselves, which is why bundles are always a great idea. And you can't get a yes if you don't ask. Remember that this, when you're talking to vendors or even sending emails to vendors to try to open accounts, this isn't personal at all. It's all about business. They are in the business of selling products. You're in the business of selling products to the end user via brick and mortar, your email, your, your Facebook marketplace, your Etsy shop, your Amazon store, wherever it is that you're selling all these products, they want to sell products to you and you want to sell products to your customer and everybody wins and everybody makes money. So if you can present your case to these people that are selling products and you can say, I would like to make your company money, you can make me money by allowing me to sell these products. So using Am they won't sell to Amazon sellers as an excuse of why you can't find wholesalers is no longer valid. Yes, you're going to get some no's. That's just part of business. That's like saying that you're going to date the first person that comes by just because you're saying, okay, I'm looking for a relationship. And the first person that says no, oh, guess I guess I'll never date again because this person wasn't interested. <laughs> Come on now. Let's be real. Put a little bit more effort into it. Okay. Next myth and why you cannot find wholesalers is because maybe you're assuming that wholesale is too expensive, but we have a list of vendors that will work with Amazon sellers and have minimum, no, either no minimum order or under $300 minimum opening order. So wholesale does not have to be expensive. And y'all, if you're doing retail arbitrage already, I know you're spending more than $300 a week on products. I know you are. I mean, because if you're actually doing any sort of business at all, you're probably spending way more than that. So you think it's expensive or you think it's going to be thousands of dollars for a minimum when really it's not. Single unit purchases in, in sometimes you have vendors that literally will sell you one instead of one case or volume discounts, low reorder. People want to know that you're committed. They want to know that you're a legitimate business and they have early buy discounts. There's sample products that you can get. Um, being a wholesale customer is one of my favorite things about this business. I get free products. I get catalogs. I get reps calling me, telling me all about their discounts and their deals. They want your business really bad. So give it to them, but you've got to be willing to find them. Wholesale does not have to be expensive. Most of my wholesale orders for, I mean, except for like maybe my top three, those are thousands, but like there's some small orders that we place that are, you know, under $300, sometimes even under a hundred dollars. You want a little bit of this or a little bit of that, or maybe you sold out of this, but you don't need any more of that. They're really willing to work with you most of the time. So saying it's too expensive is also not, not, a valid excuse. There's lots of vendors that have really, really low minimum order quantities, or maybe they say you have to buy at least six of something or whatever it is. So wholesale does not have to be expensive. It's just about finding the vendors, which I just gave you a way to do that. Also, if you want the starter list of vendors that we already have, mommyincome.com slash vendors, and it will, you can sign up for the vendor list and it will give you a vendor list and it's got at least five vendors on there that are Amazon friendly, plus uh, a few other websites and other places that you can contact to start looking for these things. There are vendors out there you can start with. Um, another thing about how to find wholesalers is really, um, you can use things like Helium 10 or Merchant Words or um, AMZ Scout. There's a little button that if you find a profitable product on their extension that you can hit the button and say find on Alibaba or find vendor or find supplier. A lot of times it's going to bring up something like Alibaba. Um, but then you can use that information to then dig further into finding the brands or say you stumble upon a listing on Amazon and you're like, oh, I love this product. I would love to be able to sell this product on Amazon. You start digging into the listing. Look at who manufactures it. Who's the brand name? And if it's one of those weird acronym brand names, you know, like the ones I teach people to, to kind of create for their bundle brands, um, then look up that acronym and see, is this a private label product or is this a product that somebody's wholesaling and where can I get it? And start, you do a Google image search. 
right click on the image and then bring a Google image search up and see if it brings you any more information. It's a little recon, it's a little research, but with just a few minutes of research, you'll be able to find good, legitimate wholesale sources. Let me tell you another tip about wholesale. Wholesale is business to business. So if you go to a website and anybody's able to order from that website and they don't have a separate, either a separate login for wholesale customers or dealers, or they oftentimes called resellers, retailers, dealers, become a supplier, become a distributor, um, things like that, then you might want to rethink whether or not it's a middleman. So if you have an idea that you feel like it's kind of a middleman and you feel like the prices are pretty high, then maybe you should uh, dig a little bit deeper to make sure they're a legitimate wholesale. Legitimate wholesalers, they don't often have wholesale in their name either. So if it's something wholesale.com, it might be a middleman. Doesn't mean it always is. Just do your due diligence. Make sure you're looking extra careful at all the things. Oftentimes, price lists, catalogs, things like that are going to be hidden behind a registration curtain. So you shouldn't be able to go to somebody's website and see all of their wholesale prices unless you can log in and, and see, you know, and have a, a registered account. So that's another indicator of maybe if it's a wholesale website or not. Another thing you want to keep in mind is to have realistic expectations about wholesale pricing. Wholesale pricing is almost always um, probably 20 to 30% cheaper than what you might see on a retail shelf. Of course, that can vary. Um, big companies like Walmart and Amazon negotiate really, really high volume deals with a lot of brands and therefore get products for cheaper. So if you see it for $9.99 on Amazon, but then you go to Target and see it for $13.99, it's because Amazon probably negotiated a better price and bought it for cheaper or, you know, maybe somebody's doing some price war stuff going on, but they can afford to make one penny on something and still make money because they're selling millions of products every day to where Target might need to make a bigger margin in order to justify the purchase. So keep in mind that pr prices for wholesale customers often vary according to how deep your pockets are. So keep that in mind when you're going that there's probably going to be price tiers and say you're ordering, I don't know, a couple of cases or something, or your minimum order is $500. But if Amazon's spending $10,000 there for that item, then they're probably going to get a significantly bigger discount. I have other vendors I work with that as you spend more money with them, you get bigger discounts. So every year they reevaluate how much you've spent and then they say, now um, you graduated to this version and now you, you save even more money. So working long tail with, with specific vendors is always going to be a great idea. Because the longer you do business with someone, the more trust is built, the more realizing that they realize that you're a regular client, customer, they can count on you for regular purchases, and they're more apt to give you incentives. So hang in there with that as well. But there's always a myth that, that people think that wholesale pricing is going to be at least 50% off of what you see at retail. And it's just not the case, especially with rising prices and rising shipping costs and manufacturing costs in this last couple of years. Um, you're going to see significant increases in pricing and shipping and surcharges. And that also just means you have to raise your own price. So keep that in mind that your wholesale price is generally going to be 20 to 30% cheaper. And now I can hear some of your other you know, questions that you might have about wholesale and finding them or why you haven't got into wholesale and some of these myths. But the other thing when it comes to that is that wholesale is too competitive and everybody's in wholesale and everybody's selling the same products. And so there isn't room for you. And that's partially true, um, which is the reason why I bundle, because I too went from retail arbitrage and thrifting and online arbitrage into wholesale and got immediately discouraged when I started looking for pricing and realized that like, a lot of these things you can't make decent money on because Amazon fees and shipping and a prep center if you're using one and materials and cost of doing business and you realize that you're really just making pennies on the dollar and is it really worth it? This is why we bundle. I bundle because I realized that single unit items were just not making the profit margin that I wanted. I didn't want to make two or three dollars on something. I wanted to make 10 or 15 dollars on something or dare I say more than that. And so because of those things, I started bundling products together that made sense that, that customers already wanted to buy anyway because I wanted to increase my own margins.
I also wanted to create convenience for my customers because I thought, hey, what's better than that? It also helps the environment. We're not putting too many packages out there. They're all kind of going in one box. So bundling is really a way to increase your margins while using wholesale products. And it, it gives you all of the benefits of those things. So you definitely want to consider bundling as well as part of your wholesale strategy. But first, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with some of these things. Another mistake people make when it comes to wholesale and finding profitable products is, well, the number one mistake really is even when you open wholesale accounts, not doing the proper research and not doing, I mean, I'm going to give you a huge example right here for my podcast listeners. You obviously can't see what I'm showing you but I'm gonna briefly show this to our YouTube friends. So this is a huge catalog that we just got for the new year and it is from Dayspring. And this catalog is literally three over 300 pages, okay? 300 pages of products to sell on Amazon or anywhere and products to bundle. If you can't find a profitable product in a 300 page catalog, then maybe selling on Amazon isn't right for you. But I'm gonna guess that if you had just one catalog, just one, if I could hand it, if I could mail this catalog to you tomorrow and you researched every single thing in here for the next year, you could probably build an entire database of products that were making money for you, let alone the bundle possibilities. But the reality is nobody does that. They want 12 or 15 or 200 different wholesale accounts. They get all these catalogs. They get overwhelmed. They say, I can't find anything to sell. And then they go back to their nine to five or they go back to whatever it is they were doing before this or chasing down the next opportunity to try to make money. You don't want to make money. You just want to make excuses. If you want to make money and I handed you this catalog and I said, research every single thing in here, find something profitable to bundle, find something prof profitable to sell single unit. I bet you could if this is all you had. But the thing is that more people I think are making are, are more interested in making excuses than they are making money and excuses can't be cashed, but checks can checks. Do anybody use, nobody uses checks, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, what, however you choose to receive your money. Uh, that is not, that, that is just an excuse. So this is your challenge. Your challenge is if you already have wholesale accounts open, go back and look at the fresh new catalogs for 2022 for those companies and start by in page one and research everything in that catalog until you can either find a profitable product or a profitable bundle or both. And if you get all the way through an entire catalog and you can't find either one of those, we're going to have a free coaching call. So if you do that and you still can't find anything, then let's have a free coaching call, me and you, and we will work it out. We will find you a profitable product. But nine out of 10 people just don't do that. They have stacks of catalogs. They haven't even looked through. They shrug their shoulders and say, well, I looked at this section and that section and couldn't find anything. And so I guess I gave up. Stop giving up. Are your dreams still there? Is that idea of you running your own business and having your own money or get breaking free from a nine to five or whatever it is that you started this to begin with? Is that dream still alive and still there? Because nobody's going to look through that catalog for you. No one's going to do that research for you unless you hire them to. <laughs> and that's even smarter. <laughs> but is your dream still there? Because giving up on it doesn't move you any closer to it. And unless you have new and different dreams that you want to follow, then follow those. But if it's still there to do that, then what are you waiting for? Get off this podcast, get off this YouTube, get those catalogs out and start doing your research because you can and will find wholesale profitable products to sell. I think maybe you're just looking with some blinders on or you need it to be refreshed and renewed to remember that you have access. Or if you don't have access yet, you can get access. Follow the video trainings. Mommyincome.com slash 100 is your free training on how to find tons and tons of wholesalers. Number two is mommyincome.com slash vendors. Get your vendor list and start with those vendors because guess what? Hundreds of other people have downloaded the same list. Do you know how many people have actually taken action on that list? probably very few people. So is it going to be you? Is this year going to be your turn? 
that's all up to you. Finding wholesale products, finding wholesale vendors is very simple. It's what you do with it after that that makes the profit or doesn't. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go and watch the video and learn and register for some of these trade shows and attend them online or look at their exhibitor list? Are you going to download the vendor um, vendor sheet that I just sent to you, mommyincome.com slash vendors? Make sure it has an S on the end. Um, are you going to join the Facebook group and ask questions there and hopefully get responses from people that have been there and done that? Our Facebook group's amazing. Um, you can ask questions in there and get really le good, legitimate answers. So really, this is all up to you. This was a reality check for how many excuses have you made or how many action steps have you taken. And again, this is open for discussion. If you feel like you've done absolutely everything you could and you still haven't found one vendor or one product to sell, hit me up. I will have a chat with you and we will find you something that really, really works. Guys, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other podcast, any other person talk. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Uh, if you want to join the Facebook group, mommyincome.com slash join us. You need a code word. This week's code word is vendors. So make sure you use the code word in order to get in the Facebook group. I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Bye, everyone.